audience, in talk number two, we're going to talk about love and feel, um, and uh, and we're going to have a lot to talk about. And uh, you know, if if you want to go grab a cup of coffee, and grab uh, grab a t cup of tea, listen to some music like love and feel, and feel free to do that as you listen to our talk. So I'm Kang Boy. You know, you took part in the Australian Idol competition, yeah. and uh, <laughs> this this you know we we knew of you. Um, First time through that competition. Do you remember this time? I remember like it was yesterday, but it seems like it seems. Oh my goodness, like like a lifetime ago. Um, yes, I remember it. <laughs> um, it was the biggest learning curve because it was the first time that I stepped out as as a solo artist. But as prior to that, I've been signed to Universal Music and EMI, and back then and. Um, released two albums through the Boy Band North. I always wanted to be a solo artist, but I never had the courage. I just, I was too scared and too afraid. So um, at 25, I'd literally sort of achieved everything that I ever wanted to achieve by that time. And I thought to myself, well, what's the next step? And my mother said to me all the time, well, why don't you try for Strain Idol? And I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna no, it's not. Absolutely not. I don't want to bear my soul on national TV, man. I don't want to do that. It's too hard. Um, but you know what? I summoned the courage and I went, okay, let's do this. And that year, 32, I remember, was 32,000 contestants and I came eighth. And I, I, it, was one of the, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life because I learned how to be vulnerable. And I learned how to accept criticism. I learned that as an artist, you are, you have to be so honest and so true to yourself so that the public can feel you. And through that competition, it made me realize what being a real artist was. And it's about bearing your soul and actually being so comfortable about that and learning how to cope and, and, and to understand that being judged is just a part of life. You can't control it, so don't worry about it. And once I got comfortable with that, that's when I think my career really started to open up. So I, I would say that Australian Idol was my first opportunity to truly understand what it, what it meant to be an artist. And then secondly, there was the first time in my life that I connected with the Vietnamese community. Now we, we knew a lot of your song, you know, 13, 14 years ago, 15 years ago. You and I, through my eyes, a little love. Did love always encompass and embrace your life? Yeah, I think I'm a, very, I'm a really positive person. And I think that I have a lot of love to give and a lot of love to receive, you know? And I, I just feel that ultimately when you die and when you look at life back and you're on your deathbed, you just want to know that your loved ones are around you. And you just want to know that they, they're going to be okay. Because they are the ones that are going to miss you the most. They are the ones that would die for you. And I think I've been really lucky in my life that I don't have a lot of friends, but I have some incredible friends around me that would literally die for me. And, and, and I think if you can, the more I got comfortable with myself and just, you know, self-love, and, and I know it may sound cliche, but when you get comfortable and you start to love yourself, more and more every day um, and accept yourself and all your flaws and your weaknesses and, and all that kind of stuff. I think what you're able to do is share that positivity and love for everybody else. And I think ultimately love is what drives us. Love is why we live. Love is the defining factor of whether we're happy or unhappy. It's love. That's what human is. That's what makes us human. That was, again, another powerful and, and exceptionally touching and, and inspiring story as well as sharing. Uh, I appreciate you answering that question. Thanks so much. Uh <laughs>